My name is Jason Corey. I'm a nurse anesthetist here at Phelps Health. I've been here about 14 years now. I am Laurie Corey and I am an educator here for nursing and I've been here 10 years. We had an evening where our daughter Callie, she's 13 now, she turned 13 in the midst of all this. She came down and was in tears and she stated that she had accidentally swallowed a battery from one of those LED remotes. We were just getting ready for bed. We decided to make a phone call and Jay made the phone call. I've taken care of patients like this before uh, that have swallowed a button battery and uh, knew it was a pretty urgent thing to get taken care of. Um, I didn't know exactly how urgent, but uh, I uh, phoned a friend and my friend was uh, Dr. Voigt and asked him and he said absolutely get to the hospital. And uh, so we packed up Callie and uh, raced on to the hospital. Callie started complaining of um, chest pain and the closer we got to the emergency room the more severe the chest pain became. There wasn't really anything that we could do to make it better and that made us feel pretty helpless. When we got to the ER it was fairly quick getting us back into a room. We went through triage and we got back in the room and it seemed like everybody already kind of knew what was going on. Um, Jennifer Wall was our emergency room nurse and she was extremely caring and just really awesome yeah she was awesome she you could tell that she had compassion for what we were going through the x-ray tech came in and took an x-ray and it was obvious that the battery was lodged right there behind her aorta so dr voigt expedited everything very quickly uh, the anesthesia staff which Yes, I had a little inside track to them, uh, was uh, Charlie Crone, Colin Dobson, and Karen Zhang. All three of them were there, uh, knowing that this was a very urgent thing to get taken care of. They were awesome with Cali the entire way, and uh, pretty much everybody that we ran into and at that point was very speedy mm -hmm. and knowledgeable and comforting and rushed us through. We got uh, over to the OR uh, holding area where uh, the team was setting up in the uh, operating room for the emergency uh, endoscopy that needed to take place. As soon as that was done, they whisked her away and we went to the waiting room for the longest, well, <laughs> 15, 20 minutes of our lives. And uh, Voigt came out and had the battery and out, he said it was out within 30 seconds of him getting the scope in her, but uh, there was some obvious damage done to her esophagus. It had obviously burned uh, about a third to a half. It was a 30% circumferential yeah. burn to the esophagus. And up until that point when we were waiting in the waiting room and until Dr. Voigt came out, I still don't think that we really comprehended how emergent swallowing a button battery is. Um, we knew it needed to be out, we knew it needed to be retrieved, but we didn't realize that the damage was more from the battery hydrolyzing within the esophagus and causing the burns. Um, that was the scary part. Like once Dr. Voigt came out and talked with us, we knew just how emergent this was. We really felt comfortable knowing that he was in there and he had experienced this before and knew exactly how emergent this was to get this out. He also knew that we weren't completely out of the woods yet mm -hmm. and that she would need further care. Uh, and recognized that uh, Children's was the best place for her to go as they had the most specialized uh, gastrointestinal team uh, in the area, in the Midwest pretty much. And so uh, after waiting for an ambulance for a little while, it was a busy night I guess, so we waited for the ambulance. She was very stable, everything was uh, very good. She was in recovery, she was wide awake, she was joking with us, she was 
um, doing pretty well, actually. Yeah. It was pretty, it was, I mean, it was crazy how quickly she got over and better and she had no more pain. And as soon as uh, the ambulance came, whisked her away, I grabbed our other daughter, Addison, and we met up at, uh, in St. Louis. So she had her initial endoscopy, which showed a lot of inflammation and swelling from the burns from the battery. And then when we were in, up at Children's, we went through many, many more tests. Um, she had to have a feeding tube placed, and the feeding tube um, stayed in for five weeks. The only thing that she could eat were um, clear liquids to start with, and then eventually, after another test, we were advanced to soft, um, soft liquids, uh, full liquids. She was a real trooper throughout the whole thing and followed it to a T, which I was pretty impressed with. But I think the biggest part was how many people reached out to ask how she was doing, what can we do, um, flowers that were sent, letters to Callie. We're in such a small community that it wasn't just Phelps Health that was amazing in this. It was our public schools. They reached out and asked everything that they could do. Her class, um, one of her classes sent, every one of them sent a card, um, multiple cards, multiple times. It was amazing just to see a small town and how everybody can pull together for something like this. And I know that our situation is very fortunate, but I know and I've heard from others that the same thing happens for them. Um, I was told when I got to hang out with Callie at the hospital, uh, the doctors would come in at Children's and they said, we're still baffled of how you got to the hospital and got the battery out so fast. Uh, it was what? 90 minutes. 90 minutes, which was still a long time. Uh, Especially when it's your child in pain. It's an extremely long right. time. Uh, they said that that never happens. How, how does that happen? And we're not ones to kind of let people know that we're in the medical field. Uh, when we go to different hospitals, we feel like we get different treatment, you know, some, sometimes. So we were trying to hide that fact, but we really couldn't hide it this way because this time because <laughs> they kept asking questions of how, so you just have a general surgeon's phone number in your phone? Like, how does that happen? And uh, it wasn't just that. It was everybody in the emergency room knew we've got to move. We only live 10, 15 minutes from the hospital and everybody acted quick. Whereas at Children's, they said people take time to get to the hospital. They take time to realize what the problem was and uh, then get to the hospital, then the doctors to diagnose what's going on, then to call the surgeon in, then the endoscopy team, and then get the battery out. By then it's over two to two and a half hours. The problem with that is then after that amount of time, it can, the battery can burn through the esophagus and into vessels, specifically the aorta, which some kids don't do too well with. Uh, they have very bad outcomes. So I truly feel, we truly feel, that living in this small town with this fantastic hospital saved our kid's life. Yeah. Afterward, Callie had follow-up appointments. We saw Dr. Cohen for radiology. She had repeat testing with him. And Dr. Clemente came down. And he, he had uh, came and talked to me and he said, you know, it's... It's always those times where you want to know what happens with a child when something like this happens. I always see the beginning, but I don't always see the follow-up because they're usually sent off to a pediatric specialty. And that meant a lot that he came down and talked to us. And Dr. Cohen was absolutely wonderful with Callie and talked her through the whole thing. And again, addressed Callie and not just me when we were in the exam room and we were doing the procedure. Um, she had repeat CAT scans and our staff made her feel very comfortable with that. Talked her through the whole thing, you know, put up, put on a movie or something to watch. Um, I'm amazed at how 
unafraid Callie was throughout this. She was scared when the pain was happening, but this whole episode had lasted three months and her final testing was a clean bill of health. But she always stayed positive and stayed reassured. And I think it was because so many people gave her so much reassurance from the beginning, even when she was hurting so bad in the ER. See, she had an EGD done after what, five, was it five weeks? It was a little over five, five weeks. Five weeks of the uh, feeding tube being in. Uh, the EGD was perfectly clean. The, EG, the feeding tube was out. Uh, and they said, we don't need to see you anymore. And she said, follow up with everybody back here at Phelps. Really cool. They said, start off with some soft foods um, for like a week or so. Just something, nothing, you know, potato chips or anything, you know, coarse and crunchy like that. Uh, fortunate for her, we, it was right at spring break. <laughs> and we were going to Florida, so she cost us about a million dollars in crab legs for the week and <laughs> we were happy to give it to her she she uh, has resumed a normal diet now she's eating everything in sight like a 13 year old does and uh, she's very active in uh, with cheerleading and she's doing all that uh, with the, the Rolla Bulldogs uh, junior high she is back to her old self just it's it's really wonderful